Hey everybody, we are still working on our flow-ish journal. We have our covers done and this is the way that um, this one turned out. I've already added my binding here and I'm going to show you how to do that. Isn't that just cool? That turned out really nicely. And I've already done my closure for this one as well. I'm just using a simple brad along with some elastic string. I have left a lot of leeway here because I don't know how chunky this journal is going to get. But I can always, I arrange these things so I can take this in a little bit. You know, if it's just too, um, if it's not holding everything securely, I can kind of just re tie this tie right here and make it work a little bit better but I thought that it turned out pretty good really pretty fabric I'm just so tickled with the fabric um, I thought I'd take you quickly through the way that I did my closure and show you how to wrap the the binding material along the spine of a flowish junk journal and how to tie that off I did put a couple of pieces of scrapbook paper inside my book, uh, you know, just to kind of neaten it up to make it look a little bit neater. Plus, this will give me a lot of places if I, if I want to uh, add some embellishments or add pockets or whatever, this gives me a nice place to do it. Let's talk about this closure. It's very, very simple. Be sure that I want this to be the front of my book, so I'm opening it like this. I'm grabbing my pokey tool, um, all thingy, and I'm poking a hole right here. I'm twisting. I do want that hole to be pretty big, but not too big. To get the hole kind of even up with the front closure, I sort of just bend the book and then pull it back just a little bit so I can kind of get a bead on where this should go. And I think right here is where I will put my brad. Ouch. <laughs> I poked my finger. There we go. I've chosen just a really simple little brad. This was something that somebody gave to me a while back, and I thought it was really pretty. I thought the colors looked really nice on this. So I'll push this through, grab an X-Acto knife, pull the prongs apart, and we've got our front closure, front part of our closure done. In the hole in the back, I like to put some of these handy dandy reinforcers. That just, it kind of neatens things up and it does provide some reinforcement for the, um, the hole that you poked for a closure. Whoop, telephone. Telephone, be right back. Okay, friends, I'm back. That was my sweet mama on the telephone. Uh, we are, let's see, we punched our hole for our closure, which is right here. And I am, you know, I've got to try and make that just a little bit bigger, but I don't want to tear my box board. So I'm just kind of working with the awl to kind of make the hole just a little bit bigger. I've got some stretchy string, and that's what I'm using to make my closure. So I'm going to clip off a little bit of that, and you're going to think, well, that's a whole lot of string. And it is a lot of string, but I like to err on the side of, of caution. I like to err on the side of just having too much instead of too little. This is a little bit tricky, but once you kind of get the hang of it, you've got the hang of it. Um... Let's see, we want this to go this way. So this needs to run through this way. And I'm gonna slide one piece of my stretchy string through. I'm gonna kind of pull it to the side and then that gives me another hole 
to lace the other part of the string through. Now I can tell that's not, it, I have to cut off the, the fluff right there. And then we're just going to pull this, push this through. And there we go. I'm going to pull these until they're even. And then I'm going to tie a knot right here. Now, like I said, like I was showing you on the other one, I would rather have too much of the stretchy string than too little because we don't want to crunch our um, signatures into the book. So just take both strands, kind of try and push your knot up to the up to the end there. Give it a good tug. And there is your closure. And you can see, you know, it's, it's kind of, we've got a good bit of space to work with, but should we discover that we don't need that much space, we can always adjust by uh, redoing our knot over here. So there we go. Now it's time to put our binding in. This is a wrap binding. And it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite bindings. I do this all the time in junk journals and art journals and things like that because it's it turns out really well. Gives you a way to um, to remove things from your book if you want to. A lot of people are using elastic for these uh, flow-ish journals, which is fine too. You know, whatever you want. We're going for four signatures. I've got three. This is my fourth. One, two, three, four. Make sure that your um, brad is to your right. This is the back of your book, front of your book. I bring this up. Cross it under the first fiber, pull up on everything else, and then tie. This makes a beautiful closure, and it works really well. Like I said, a lot of people are using elastic. A lot of people are using like an, it's almost a Midori Traveler's Notebook kind of binding. But I had all these pretty fibers, so I did want to make use of them. Okay. I'm leaving this long because I do want to put some dangles and beads and some pretty things on, on my uh, binding. So I'm just going to leave that long for a minute. Okay, so there we go, y'all. The next thing that we're going to do is start filling up our flow-ish journals with all kinds of beautiful things. So I will be back with part three. Talk to you soon, y'all.